I was just goofing off, about to leave. Then I decided, um, why not make a video? And what I have here prepared is a balanced staff. Uh, 1570 model. This is actually for a 16750 GMT balanced staff replacement tutorial video. So let's get started. What you're going to need, staking set, and the proper stakes. Also, you're going to need a replacement staff and um, the movement we're working on. So, let's get started. If you like this channel, um, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Um, I'm here for you. Thanks a lot. Now, let's get into this. The watch I have here, um, it's kind of a, it's really beat up actually. I don't even know if the insert's legit, but it could be. And I know, that the dial is refinished. I can tell that the hands are uh, aftermarket. And this watch just needs a lot of love, but you know, there's only, this will never be what it once was, but right now it's not even working. So we're going to get it working. All right. For just doing a casual video, this, uh, these steps are actually pretty technical. So I'm just going to show you what we're doing here. I have the whole movement stripped down. So right now it's just the balance wheel on the main plate. Now that's fine, but what we need to do is remove the balance wheel from the balance bridge or what some people say, the balance cock. But I just say the bridge. Anyways, this right here is the stud screw. It's a little tiny screw right there holding in the stud there. In order to do that, I use my short my small screwdriver. It's actually not dressed for a screw that small, so. Gotta make sure it's gonna fit in there. Okay. So now that that's loose, Can actually take off the balance bridge and it will just leave me with the balance rim with the hairspring on it and the roller table on the bottom side. So just want to make sure you can Y'all can see that.
Okay, this is better. So now that the balance bridge is off, we are left with only the balance wheel. And we're gonna get started for real right now. So, we have the bridge removed. All we're left with is the wheel. I'm taking a little stump like this. And now I need to mark the orientation where the hairspring stud is. That's the part that connects to the balance bridge as a fixed point. I need to mark, because everything on this balance wheel is gonna be removed. I'm removing the staff, I'm remo removing the hairspring, I'm removing the roller table. So, but then when we put in the new staff, we have to reinstall the roller table and the hairspring and those are in a position that we need to remember where those where they're oriented you know some people you know you could use a sharpie to mark it but i use a little pen here i put a little dimple on the rim And I can tell this has been done before because there is another dimple right there. So that's actually a good thing because it's gonna be easy for me to spot. Now that I have that, it's time for me to put another dimple where the orientation of the roller table is. There's a jewel on that roller table I really don't know how many of you are familiar with a lot of these watch terms, the nomenclature for the parts. Or if you're just watching for entertainment or watching because you want to learn how to fix watches. But, you know, I can explain things, I just don't know how much I should be explaining. So I'll keep it simple and just explain what I'm doing. We don't need to go into how the whole watch works. So now the next step is to remove the roller table. And I do it this way with some razor blades. Put one up here. I sneak the razor blade right under the table. Then I get my other one ready to go. But sometimes the roller table likes to pop off and it could get lost, so I take a little piece of Rodico and I s stick it right on the roller table. So it adds some weight. And then when you pop it off, it just falls instead of goes flying. I take my second razor blade.
sneak it right in there as well. Give it a little tap. Boom. Here we go. Roller table removed. It did go flying, but my Rodico crisis averted. Now, next step is to remove the staff. But when we remove the staff, it actually removes the hairspring as well, all in one good swoop. But I do need to make sure I don't lose that roller table. So I'm gonna set it aside. Okay, so now I take out this Horia tool. Um, we have stumps and pushers here. We have some more stumps and pushers. More stumps and pushers. This isn't a task uh, we do every day, so I'm just pulling everything out. So, I have here the set with which we will be rem doing all these steps. So, Check the caliber, it's 1500 caliber. The correct pusher. And the correct stump. This is strictly for removal. And I have an adapter. Now this stump, uh, this pusher here has a little hole which accommodates uh, part of the balance staff and when you push it through it breaks the staff this is thin enough to go straight through the collet and when you lift it up the staff will be gone and the hairspring will be free Put it there, put this there. Now this stuff is actually broken, but I don't know which side of it's broken. And it's uh, the top. Which is good because you need top of the staff to be a little blunt. So what I'm doing here, I'll give you a closer look. You can see this better. I'll just show you.
So you can really see that. So now what we do, now that you saw where we're at, we give this a good little torque in that snapping motion. Okay, now you can see, as I lift here, The balance staff is gone. Just broke right through and the hairspring is right there. Now that we've done that, we can count our blessings. We have successfully removed the hairspring the roller jewel and the broken balance staff. And we have marked where the hairspring and where the orientation of the roller jewel go. So we're all safe. Nothing's broken. Everything's removed. <clears throat> the old staff is still broken, but now it's time to put in the new staff. But first I put my tools away. Okay, the next step for me is to find that new staff. Boom, these are some staffs. Now, for this old watch, you know, they don't even, Rolex doesn't even make parts for, for these movements anymore. So we ended up getting these on eBay, super expensive. Um, but they're original. Okay, so I'm taking a look at my reference guide here. I'm gonna have to show you how I set this up. So this, this staff is super small. I mean, I don't know if anybody's ever done this or if anybody who's watching has ever done this before, but this is the balance staff. It's just so itty bitty. So I put the staff in the stump the way it goes. And I take the balance rim.
Okay. So we're actually going to be riveting the staff into the balance wheel. Now this puncher has kind of a domed piece on the top here, which, which spreads the top of the rivet on the balance staff into the balance rim. And I'll show you. First, we're gonna center this. And that goes there. Balance wheel goes there. This will fit right over it. But I'll show you these pieces right now. That's how it looks when, uh, right before you do the punch. So I'd like to just show you these pieces here. Not sure if you can see that but it does have more of a domed tip. And that is the staff. So these are the pieces that we're putting on together. That's all we're doing right now. So now that you see it, There we go. So the stake has a hole in it, which the staff goes through. And then the domed surface actually rivets the staff into the balance wheel. So with one nice whack, I will come down, boom. And that staff will be secured into the balance wheel. So let's do it. I think that was pretty good. I did it a couple more times though. Now we, uh, we see the results. Actually, no, that was just getting the rivet 
spread. What we need to do now is use the next the next uh, stake. So that this stake spreads the rivet. The next stake we use will flatten the rivet. So instead of having a domed tip, like the last rivet, this one has a flat tip. Fits over the same way. Do a little tap, flatten it out. Now that's all together. Um, I'm really not worried about it. Um, it's all there. Good thing to do though, is to check that it's tight, check that it's secured. And, uh, the way we do that, I'll show you right now. This is the way that uh, my teacher always showed us to check the tightness of the balance staff once you've once you've punched it in we'll take a pin vise You tighten it over the staff, then you can stab a little piece of peg wood onto it. And now I twist the pin vise. And so the pin vise turns but the staff isn't. And the pin vise is pretty tight on the staff. And if the staff was loose, you would see that piece of peg wood turning. So it's always good to double check. I know I whacked it pretty hard, so I know that rivet's good. Uh, I mean, not, I didn't hit it too hard though. Just enough. So next thing we will do now is reinstall the roller jewel. You know, we could reinstall the roller jewel now, which I will do actually, but Eventually we're gonna to have to true true the wheel, so let's let's do that. You know, and a lot of these steps, you know, they just seem so miserable and they are. But you gotta do it just to check. And if there's you know, you this doesn't need to be like so like 100% perfect. It just can't be atrocious or you're going to have problems. You know, you want it better than good enough, but um, 
Well, that's pretty good. So this might be a lot better than good enough. And this is basically how I true the, the wheel or check for trueness. So I have a little uh, cat whisker here and I'm sp spinning this wheel and there's this, this spring tang here and I can see the gap between it and the rim. And that rim is not wobbling. This gap is staying the same. You can see it's true. Very nice. Now, if it wasn't, you have to bend on the rim, you know? Luckily, you don't have to do that. Okay, so back to it it's really time to reinstall this roller jewel so for that i'm actually going to use uh, one of my homemade stumps one of my homemade pushers i'm actually using uh, a stump here You just need the right stump. Okay. Use this stump. So I got a look at the balance rim. And you can know that orientation where here's the old here's the old stuff. I really don't like this stuff. Now I'm gonna show you this. Okay, and now I turn. Now 
And I'll show you this right now. can see the roller jewel there. Roller jewel's right there. And I just push it flat flat onto the staff. <clears throat> there we go, look at that. Oh, it's not all the way down yet. Good, I was being careful. But you can see we're getting there. So let's keep going. Now we're there. Yeah, you gotta look at it with this 10 power loop. Else you'll just never know. Now, that we have the new staff in, the roller table is on, we gotta put the hairspring back on. But before we do that, we need to make sure that this balance wheel is actually balanced. We also know it's true. So we use the truing calipers and everything's going real smooth right now. I'm just checking in, you know. This part is just the part that I am not thrilled with doing. Could take forever. Could be real quick. But I'm leveling out Okay, so this is a little level. I place it here to make sure that we're all leveled out. Put the balance wheel right, right between these jeweled blades. Oop. Okay. So the balance wheel is sitting here, safe and sound. We have the roller jewel on, we have the balance staff installed, 
we know there is, the rim is true and now we need to make sure that it's balanced out that there's equal weight all around the rim you know if you didn't put the roller jewel exactly on the right orientation it could throw the wheel off balance it might have a heavier side than and a lighter side it could affect the timing of the watch so this is the part that you got to be pretty careful with because if there's a heavy spot then we need to remove weight from the rim and um you know that's just what it is uh if you also don't want to be super critical too you want to make sure you check you're just making sure that there's nothing super egregious you don't there will be a little heavier spot here a lighter spot there you know it's not going to be like 100 percent perfect it's a really old watch but you want to make sure that there isn't a spot that's absolutely heavier than the other side just, just it would just throw off timing too much you couldn't regulate the watch so what i do i take this cat whisker here and i try and roll the wheel see if i could balance the wheel on another side. You can see the wheel rolling and then it wants to stop. It, the heavier side will fall to the bottom. So I do see that there is a heavier side, but the fact that it's not stopping completely on that side quickly means that it's heavier, but it's not so bad. It's not super heavier. And what I wanna do is see if I get the balance wheel to balance on the opposite side and see that's where it falls back again so I do know there is a heavier spot we can see that there Try and rotate the wheel. Yeah, I like the wheel to stop four on four different sides. But that is the heavy spot. So I'm, I will be removing I will be removing a little bit of material from this balance rim. Now that the wheel's completely stopped, 
I know the heavier side is on the bottom. So I grab the rim opposite of the heavy spot. take my cutting tool. I'm just going to remove a little bit of material. I'm not trying to go too crazy. I know, I know we got to be perfection, but But you don't want to get tunnel vision. You don't want your perfectionism to cause you to be drilling so many holes, removing too much weight. that the wheel ends up too light. Then you want to be able to time the watch out anyways. You could have a perfectly balanced wheel in the end, but if you remove too much material to make it perfectly balanced, the watch will just run too fast because the rim is too light. So. Okay, let's try it again. So I like to see if I can stop the wheel at multiple stages of rotation. That way I know that there isn't a spot that's too heavy than another. Yeah, still heavy on that side. So the thing is, you just gotta keep going. I'll wait till it stops. I'll remove a little bit more material. This is one of the more frustrating sides of watchmaking. a little pilot hole here.
now I'm drilling in the same hole I drilled before and also I've created a new hole right next to it. But I think for now that's enough. Let's see how this does. Okay. Nice. <laughs> okay, so it doesn't seem to be stopping so quick where it used to want to stop. It almost looks like uh, confused. It doesn't know where the heavy spot is, but it's still there. Yeah, so I'll keep going a little bit, a little more. Heavy spots still in the same place. But that's okay. You know, maybe third time's a charm. Let's see what we have here. Oh, and we're stopping at completely 
opposite side. Of where the heavy spot was before. Now this is really good. I like being able to turn the wheel and having the wheel to be able to stop everywhere I want it to stop. And it's doing it. The wheel may still turn though, you know, we're talking. It's all very, very delicate stuff, but when I want it to stop, it will stop. It wants to keep rolling and it rolls back. But it, as long as it doesn't stop where the heavy spot is, then we know it's pretty balanced. You know, and this is actually very lucky because you could be doing this for five minutes or an hour. So there we go. Wheel, I'm very pleased. The wheel's true, it's balanced, nothing's broken, staff is in, roller jewel's on. Now we press the hairspring on. Sure, I put this tool away. Okay. Now for the bottom stump, I need a stump with a hole large enough to accommodate the roller jewel should fall into the stump. I need to locate the marking on the balance rim There we go, two little marks where the stud goes. Put this little hand cutter back. Now, grab the hairspring. I'm turning this, I'm lowering that pusher. It's going to sit right on the hairspring collet. It's going to sit right on the hairspring collet. I'm just going to simply push it in.
But right now it's more important that I see this than you. And we're on. Boom, done. Now, just like that, I'll show you. There is our balance wheel. Hair spring on. Roller table on. It, these really are very pretty, you know. Nice old blue hair spring. fully assembled. Now, the next thing I need to do is attach it to the balance bridge. And that's not so hard. Only the movement. It's going, every part is going home. So this is the last step. You can see that? I'm putting everything back where it belongs. And when all this is put together, I'm still not done with the watch. I need to final clean the watch then I need to reassemble. I need to oil the capsules. I need to have the pallet fork in there and I need to make sure that the divisions are proper. I need to make sure that in fact, I screw this hairspring stud in at the right height. I need to make sure that the roller jewel is connecting with the pallet fork at the right depth and Everything I just did now is just to replace the staff and take um, ad advanced precautions on um, the timing element of how the watch uh, theoretically could run if there's a heavy spot, if the wheels uh, riveted sloppily. But luckily so far, everything's been really good. Um, I'm putting, I'm securing the balance wheel to the bridge. I'm going to reinstall the pallet fork and everything's gonna get washed one more time. Final clean, I'm gonna reassemble, re-oil, double check um, the spacings, the divisions of the escapement and uh, put the watch back together, waterproof it. Um, but this is it right now, this is the final step for us today and it is about time because when i started this video i was about to go home but i realized you know i'm alone in the shop it's it's a good time to do a video you yeah. know
But I'm glad I got to do this video because it's probably one of the, the more technical aspects of the job. Gotta make sure I get that. Right in there. Okay, look at that. Now we're back, we're back where we started this video. I got the movement, the only thing in it is the balance wheel. But this time, the balance staff isn't broken. And I can continue on with this job at a later date. So, I appreciate you all watching. Um, I need to clean up here and get going. It's been a long week and uh, I appreciate everyone for watching. If you're new uh, to the channel, like and subscribe if you did like. And uh, if you want notifications, just ring that bell. All right, thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. Uh, wish all of you uh, the best of luck and I genuinely appreciate your support. So, great. Have a good day. Have a good weekend. Wherever you're at watching this. Bye-bye.